<laughs> right. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, sorry for the slightly slow start. I think we're we're up and running now. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome Chris Hacker to the talk today. He's going to tell us all about the uh, the community survey that we do every year for Nextflow and NF Core. As uh, it's already been a bit of noise about the results and everything, and, and thank you to everyone who submitted. But Chris is going to delve in and give us some some juicy insights. So uh, looking forward to hearing about that. Um, Chris is working at Secura, uh, Secura Labs, as a developer advocate for the Nextflow and NF Core communities. So uh, thank you very much for speaking, Chris, and I'll, I'll hand over to you. Great, thank you. Um, hopefully, everyone can now see that um, or see my slides. Um, so yes, um, welcome. Thank you for uh, for having me. What I will be going through today is some of the results from the state of the workflow survey. Um, the information I have taken from the survey has a real community flavor. Um, so things relevant to Nextflow and the NFCore community in particular. Um, as Phil already mentioned, um, there was a lot of sort of noise being made on the different channels, on Twitter, on Slack, um, asking people to fill this in. And it's, it's really important that people do. And a part of this is because of the Chan Zuckerberg initiative grants that we've got, um, which are really there to help us increase um, sort of the, the the reach of, of even core and Nextflow, making sure that people who do want to come along to the community can join um, and sort of get over the overheads of um, actually joining the community and making sure they understand what's going on. Um, so as a part of that, of course, we have like the mentorship program, um, looking at the ambassador program, um, but there's a lot of initiatives that go on. Um, and the survey is really a way of helping to measure um, how we're doing with things like that. Um, so you might be asking another survey, didn't I just do one? Um, yes, absolutely. So this is the 2023 community survey results. Um, this is the third year of doing the survey. And from 2022 onwards, we started to ask um, sort of extra questions about the NF Core community in particular. This year was the largest survey to date. So there were 502 responses to the survey. This is up by 31% from 2022. So I think in 2022, we had um, sort of slightly over 300 um, and that was um, the 502 responses is more than double that of 2021. So each year we're getting more responses, which is fantastic. When we look at where people are coming from, so um, the region or the country that they, um, the respondents told us um, they live, in 2022, we had 20 different countries that were listed um, from participants, and this year it's 47. So you can see that we've got a much larger geographic reach. Um, we're having responses from, from many, many more countries than we did uh, more than double that of 2022. What you might also notice there is that um, most of the responses have come from America and Europe. So you'll see that America is still number one with most responses coming from there. Um, and then sort of Europe makes up the, the rest of the top six, especially in 2022. Some special mentions go out to India, Belgium, and uh, I think it was Serbia who have all made the top 16 for the first time. When we sort of look at the uh, excuse me, the survey participants, when we look at the age, we see that most people are younger than sort of 40. Um, you'll see that 37% were under the age of 30. Um, this is slightly up from 2022. So generally it's, it's trending a little bit younger. When we asked the participants for the survey uh, what languages they were proficient in. So this is slightly different to the question that we asked in 2022, which, which was your sort of most proficient language. Um, this time we've asked for all of the languages that people are proficient in. You'll see that English is still number one. So 99% of people who responded to the survey are proficient in English, but you can see there's a lot of other languages there that people are proficient as well. And this is really important information to help us decide how we can, uh, when we're doing things like translating documentation or doing training in other languages. 99% is obviously just about everyone, um, but there is an important 1% there that they are proficient in English. So having information like this really helps us prioritize um, our efforts. When we looked at gender, you'll see that um, it is still predominantly males that responded to the survey who are Nextflow users, um, but the female representation did increase slightly. So it's up to 26%, which I think is about um, a 3% increase from 2022, um, as well as 1% of other who didn't identify as either male or female. When we look at the roles or people how to define their roles, most people define themselves as bioinformaticians, which is the same as previous years. It is down slightly from 2022, which is about 70%. Um, and that sort of 3% was spread across um, an increase in PI managers, software engineers, and data scientists. When we asked people what their sort of interests were when using Nextflow, most people said genomics. However, transcript transcriptomics, metagenomics, and proteomics were still all quite uh, prevalent. 
all of these are obviously within the life sciences. But when we sort of dig into this other group, you'll see that there are many other sort of fields outside of the life sciences that are attracting, uh, that are sort of being, next slide is being used for these as well. When we asked people how they define the industry that they belong to, most people said they came from academia, but you'll see that biotech startups and research institutions are still quite prevalent as well, as well as healthcare um, and clinical. Moving on to how people, uh, how long people have been using workflow managers and using Nextflow. When we looked at the years working with Nextflow, uh, excuse me, working with workflows. So this is a little bit ambiguous in terms of, um, is this just someone writing a bash script, sort of strapping a few tools together, or have they been using other workflow managers for some amount of time? Um, it's a little bit hard to tell this apart, but you can see that people have been using um, workflows for some time, 8% um, for 10 years or more. When we asked how long you've been using Nextflow, um, you'll see that most people are very new to Nextflow with less than one year of experience. Um, and of course, a very few um, who have been with Nextflow from the start from six to 10 years, remembering that Nextflow turned 10 earlier this year. When we asked if you are uh, using other workflow managers, um, you'll see that most people are using more than one workflow manager, um, which is expected, and a little bit of variety um, definitely doesn't hurt. When we asked about your preferences for using Nextflow, most people are running the analysis um, using Nextflow themselves, how the others are running analysis for others, um, and others um, have written their own custom in-house workflows as well. These questions weren't mutually exclusive, so you could tick multiple boxes for these. So you'll see that most people have sort of multiple roles when they're using Nextflow as well. Importantly, about 25%, 24%, um, because it's been rounded down, um, actually contribute to NFCore pipelines, which is really important as well. And really great to see that so many Nextflow users are joining the NFCore community and giving back as well. When we ask people the workflows that they actually run, so not just developing, but actually just running them, um, you'll see that most people are actually running um, NFCore workflows, which is great. So all the workflows that are being developed as a part of NFCore are getting used um, by a lot of Nextflow users. Um, of course, a lot of people are still developing their own workflows as well. Um, as well as others, some are using workflows that are developed by others in their group um, or other outsourced um, developers. Um, this is a meme that was on the Slack channel today, which I thought was quite nice. Um, so I'll give a shout out to James for, for making that as well. Um, when we asked what you find useful when you are learning uh, Nextflow, most people said the reference docs. This is a weighted average. Um, so this graph can be a little bit misleading and, and difficult to understand. Um, but roughly what's happening here with these weighted average graphs is that um, when people sort of respond positively saying it's, it's very useful, um, it drags the score up. And if it was to be, it's not useful, it'd be sort of below the line there or below zero. Um, in this case, when we actually look at these numbers in more detail, 89% of people said they find the next slide docs very useful. Um, and 73% find the NFCore docs very useful as well. Um, so it's really important that those NFCore docs as, um, documents are sort of developed as well. Um, and I think they are, which is really fantastic. Um, if you actually looked at the rest of these sort of data points in detail, um, a lot of people actually said that they're sort of um, indifferent, so they weren't either um, useful or not useful, uh, probably because they weren't um, using um, these particular methods for learning Nextflow. Um, but from actually digging into this data a little bit more, um, you find that people found all of these resources very useful. It's just some people aren't using all of them. When we asked how you get help when you have a problem with Nextflow. Um, most people are sort of reaching out on the NFCore Slack. Um, so that probably feeds into a lot of the people that responded to the survey potentially being NFCore developers or trying to use NFCore pipelines, something we've seen um, in the data already. Um, and what's also interesting is that there's been this really huge uptake in people using the Nextflow Slack, uh, which is about one year old now. So um, to see that being sort of quickly and widely adopted, is really important. When we asked if you had attended a training before, 36% no, but they would like to. Uh, well, 32% said yes, and it was one of the community trainings run by NF Core. So earlier this year, in March, we had the NF Core, uh, next slide, NF Core online community training, and all this is still on YouTube, along with all the training material. Uh, so if you do belong to that 36%, all the training material is there. Um, whether if you're a part of that 32%, you might have attended this training already. Um, but it's really great to see that those community training events um, being, being used. Um, so heavily by the community and Nextflow users. So that was very nice. Um, when we asked about how you launch your workflows, most people are launching from the command line. So 77% um, with a very small but important um, 
parts of the community using things like Tower as well as other in-house um, platforms. When we ask the infrastructure that you're running this on, um, most people are doing on-prem clusters, um, but there is a sort of increasing migration to the cloud, and that's something that we've seen um, over the last few years of the survey is that people are quickly adopting cloud, um, and we can sort of um, delve into those details um, in the survey uh, blog post as well. When we asked what was important to you, so as an Explore user, as a developer, um, documentation was number one. So people find the documentation really important, um, but things like performance at scale, ease of installation, as well as the pipelines and data, portability, community adoption, all of these things um, were important. So this is another weighted average. So anything above the line is important. Um, whether people found uh, that in particular, the commercial support wasn't overly important. Um, as well as a graphical user interface wasn't a priority for people. 63% of people reported that they felt frustrated with Nextflow, um, which I think is normal. Um, when we actually looked at the responses, so this was actually the, the, the qualitative part of the response, um, people said things like the groovy language, debugging error messages, unclear documentation, um, and having a large cache. All of these things um, you know, come up regularly. We see this in the next slide Slack, um, but we do take this very seriously. Um, and it does sort of help us prioritize the features that need to be fixed as a, or improved on as a part of Nextflow and NF Core. Looking at that in reverse, so um, when we asked what are the features people would like to see, uh, they'd like to see Nextflow in other languages other than Groovy, uh, more obvious error messages, better documentation, um, and a way of removing internet files. So this is basically the, the complete inverse um, what people felt frustrated with, um, which makes a lot of sense. There are also requests for things like ability to optimize resources, submit job arrays, um, more regular community trainings, um, as ability to write unit tests. Um, I just want to reinforce as well is that, like, we hear you, this is all uh, really important feedback, um, and the, the developers take this really seriously um, when they sort of think about what features they'll be adding to Nextflow. But I guess the bottom line, and probably the most important thing, is that 99% of people are satisfied with Nextflow. Um, so people coming to use Nextflow are really happy. Um, this is up from 98% in 2022. Uh, so this is a really fantastic result. Um, this is a picture from um, a great Australian movie called The Castle. Um, it's just the vibe of it um, as a summary. But Nextflow users are very satisfied. Nextflow has a growing user base with increased diversity, um, which is really important. Nextflow is experiencing rapid adoption and growth. We see that with a lot of Nextflow users um, having less than one year experience. Uh, the NF Core community is especially valued. Um, things like the community training and outreach um, that is done through the NF Core um, Slack channel, for example, is incredibly important. Um, and the survey has been really helpful and helped guide development of new features for Nextflow uh, as well as NF Core in the future. And that's the end of the presentation. And um, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks very much, Chris. That's really good. Um, just leave it open. Uh, anyone, feel free to unmute yourself or ask a question or drop a question into the chat and I can relay it. Uh, I liked all the memes, by the way, Chris, flashing up. I'm going to have to go back through the recording at, at half half speed to try and catch some of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I should have, should have dwelled on those. Something to break <laughs> up all the green, I think. <laughs> I can I can kick off maybe uh, if you could go back a couple of slides to the uh, to the things that people wanted to see. I thought it was quite interesting that like here, nearly all of these have got things which are being actively developed or, or coming out soon. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to just mention a couple of those? Or yeah, absolutely. Um, so if anyone's actually ever dug around on the next flow um, GitHub, for example, you see that there are a lot of branches that um, are actively developing. Um, some of these you know, particular features, um, job arrays in particular, um, that's been requested for a while. Um, and there's been some really uh, good development um, on that recently. I'm not sure if there's, there's sort of a, a date that that might be available, but um, that is a feature um, as an example that will be coming out in the future. Um, things like the more regular community training um, from a, a developer advocate perspective, uh, we know how important the training is and there will be um, more training and more training resources in the near future. Um, it's something that we're really prioritizing um, and see the value of in um, having available for the community as well. I'm not as up to date with what's happening with um, unit tests. I'm not sure if that's under active development or not. Um, but in terms of optimizing resources, um, there are features through Tower, for example, that's already doing that. Um, 
So if you're using Tower, um, you can you can sort of click the button there and um, have an optimized resource parameters file created for you. For unit tests, I was thinking about the NF test framework, which is um, oh. uh, which is a, a nice way to, to to write unit tests for Nextflow pipelines. It's not not from a core Nextflow team; it's a community tool, but it, it's being picked up and used in NF core. Um, at the moment, we've got an NF test channel on the NF core Slack. If you want to chat about it or just Google it, you'll find out. Uh, it's got really nice documentation. And yeah, the optimized resources one, I think that's not very well known, but if you're a Nextflow Tower user, once you've run a workflow on Tower, then it should come up with a little button saying optimize resources, and that will build a customized config file for you based on what that run used, uh, which should be optimized for future runs. It's not like, it was, it's still very much a work in progress. It's a, it's a preview feature, that one. So the, the UI and stuff has some <laughs> some some improvement to be made still, but uh, but it, it might be useful for those of you interested in that as a feature. Right. Well. Oh. Yeah. So there's a question uh, just coming in the chat. An excellent, nice presentation. Please make uh, example custom config files for all possible tools used in the pipeline. Um, I'm not totally clear what that question means, really. But Chris, have you got any, any yeah, thoughts about that? Um, I guess just expanding on what Phil um, has mentioned with the with the feature in Tower. Um, after you have um, executed a run and that's run to completion, you'll be given the option to go back and make this this custom config file, which would give you basically the resources that. Um, it'll take into account that the resources were used on your previous runs um, and it'll come up with a new config file that'll basically say, hey, look, like, you know, you requested, you know, 50 gigs of, of you know, or 50 CPUs for this, but you actually need two or this much memory or, or whatever else. Um, and this will go through all the tools that are a part of um, the, the, the pipeline for that. Um, it's a really nice feature. I think if you go into the community showcase um, for Tower that you'll be able to see that in action as well. Um, which is probably the, the best way to sort of to see and understand it is just to go and get hands on um, as a part of that. Any more questions? Like I do you want to screen share the optimization thing. It's not very obvious. And um, I hope I can just steal the screen share just super fast. Uh, so this is Tower. Uh, this is the testing actually. Okay, let's go into uh, verified pipelines. Uh, we can go into existing runs here, which have already gone. Uh, if I take uh, one here, you can see there's a button saying optimization available. Okay, this is a demo pipeline, so it doesn't have, <laughs> have anything in it. But you see there's one process which is called say hello, and this is saying it only needs one CPU. Um, you can imagine if this was a, an NF core pipeline, there'd be like, you know, a hundred different processes listed here with CPUs and memory for each one. So you can then manually copy that out, stick that in a custom config file for the next run. Great. Right, thanks very much, Chris. Um, pleasure to have you here. And uh, thank you everyone for joining. We'll see you uh, for the next NF Core Bite Size Talk soon. <laughs>